Muy buenos días. Sean todos. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. I'm Valdo Tapia from the Labor Market and Social Security Division at the IDB and the lead coordinator of uh, the PLAC network, which is the network for pensions in Latin America and the Caribbean. And lead coordinator of the network for pension in Latin America and Caribbean, Black Network for, of the Inter-American Development Bank. For those of you who need English interpretation, you will find an icon or graphic showing a word at the bottom of your screen that say interpretation. If you click on this icon, you will have the option to choose the English language. Now I will continue in Spanish. A nombre de los organizadores. Eh, on behalf of the organizers at the Inter-American Development Bank and through the Network for Pensions in Latin America and the Caribbean, PLAC, the AIOS, the London School of Economics, and Novaster, and B-Way, I'd like to welcome all of you cordially to the ninth edition of the Global Pension Program. We appreciate your participation today, and we encourage you to stay with us during these three days of activities. We have a very full agenda for these three days when we will be talking about pensions. And we are fortunate to have once again an exceptional group of panelists with us today. We'll talk about uh, different uh, pension systems in the world with a special focus on Latin America and the Caribbean. Economy and pensions after COVID-19, the main challenges for pension systems, protections for a a uh, society where people are living longer, uh, how we are moving forward with digitization of systems, how we can achieve equity in pensions, uh, the role of regulators in guaranteeing excellence, uh, green pensions, uh, the influence of politics and policy in the world of pensions, among others. These are the topics we will be discussing. And uh, to open up this great event, I can now have the honor of introducing to you three representatives from our co-organizer institutions. I'd like to welcome, first of all, Benigno Lopez, Vice President of Sectors and Knowledge at the IDB. Benigno, I thank you for being with us today and you have the floor. Thank you, Valdo. It's a pleasure to be with you today. As Valdo mentioned, I am a, the Vice President of Sectors and uh, Knowledge at the IDB. It's a pleasure to greet you today. And on behalf of the entire IDB team in the Division of Labor Markets and uh, the Plaque Network, and with our co-organizers, the London School of Economics, uh, the AIOS, Novaster and Biway, I'd like to welcome all of you warmly to this ninth edition of the Global Pension Program 2021. These are exciting and challenging times to be talking about pensions in Latin America and the Caribbean. In the next decade, pensions will become one of the main pillars of the uh, uh, policy in the region. Pension systems still are facing significant challenges. There's a low level of participation of workers in the formal sector, low coverage for senior citizens, and the issue of sustainability in the medium and long term. The way we deal with this today will have social, economic, and fiscal consequences for us in the future. First of all, we have a, an inevitable demographic reality. It is uh, not not favorable currently. The region is aging more rapidly than the rest of the world. According to UN projections, in 20 more years, those older than 60 will be more than those who are younger than 15 in the area. This new demographics gives us an opportunity to strengthen our 
pension you. system. However, we need to have public policy that allow us to take advantage of the current situation. Currently, only four out of 10 uh, people have a contributive pension. The issue with sustainability and design of pension system and institutional weakness in terms of development institutions are a significant challenge for all the countries. And in this context, pension systems will need to be able to provide sufficient uh, pension benefits to cover at least the basic necessities of a growing percentage of the population during a retirement period that is growing longer and longer. That is why we need to rethink, starting now, how we can guarantee that our older citizens will have their needs covered today and in the future. And this thinks we need to rethink key parameters in our pension systems, and we need to establish a design that will allow coming generations to enjoy uh, decent uh, benefits in their old age. So we have to take into account several issues. There are gender differences in pensions, not only in the region, but in the whole world. Pensions and uh, replacement uh, rates for women are lower. Women have lower salaries, lower participation rates in the labor force, and in some countries, a lower retirement age. Also, the digital re revolution, automation, and digital platforms are a new horizon in this field and technological progress will uh, give us new ways to save for uh, retirement, consolidate risk and improve confidence. And we have also other new communications tools that were not available only a few years ago. The pandemic has brought new challenges, such as the need for a quick digitization of the payment systems and early access to pension funds to make up for the loss of income due to uh, employment loss. Also, environmental, social and governance matters that have gained importance in the last few years are part of uh, risk and are relevant and should be made a part of decision making, especially taking into account that there's greater global awareness about these aspects. And civil society is increasingly pressuring their institutions to use their influence so that the companies that we invest in also will adopt practices and principles related to these matters. These challenges are shared by all the countries in our region, regardless of their geographic position or what type of system they have, whether they have a contributive or a pay-as-you-go or individual capitalization system, these challenges exist. And at the IDB, we look to improve lives in Latin America and the Caribbean today and in the future. And we want to deal with this issue in a timely way. Also, the ninth global uh, it, uh, pension program 2021 has uh, focuses on topics that are aligned with our 2021 vision at the IDB, where we deal with certain priority areas, strengthening social security systems, for example. At the same time, we're looking at cross-cutting issues such as gender issues and climate change. I'd like to thank the uh, Black Network for their efforts. And uh, the uh, Labor Markets Division at the IDB also has uh, provided a platform for an exchange of knowledge and experiences. I hope this will be a productive session for all of you, and I hope these matters uh, will be worth and productive in discussing them today. Thank you very much, Benigno. Thank you for your comments. I know you had a very full day today, so I thank you for being with us. Now I'd like to introduce to you Elio Sanchez, president of the AIOS, the Organization for the Supervision of Pension Funds, AIOS. Thank you very much, Elio, for being with us. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Waldo. 
thank you for introducing me dear colleagues and representatives of the pension system organizations ladies and gentlemen who are with us today virtually I wish you a good morning, a good day. And on behalf of AIOS, I'd like to say it is a privilege to be with you and to welcome you very warmly to this ninth edition of the Global Pension Program 2020-2021, which has been organized jointly between the IDB, the London School of Economics, and AIOS. I'd like to mention to you something that I feel is very important. Every year, this event brings together professionals and international experts in pensions. And the goal is to share progress and trends in terms of uh, pensions and to share experiences and lessons learned so that these can be taken as reference points for public policy decisions or for measures that will allow us to improve our pension systems. It's important to mention that we are going through, still going through a health crisis with COVID, and this has had an impact on pension systems in terms uh, of uh, all both kinds of uh, pensions, the contributive pensions and the pay-as-you-go. The In this type of system, we've seen proposals and uh, decisions made in terms of early retirement in order to deal with short-term needs caused by the crisis and the pandemic. And this decision may have helped uh, alleviate some short-term problems, but they will affect the adjustment of our systems and how suited they are for our needs in the future. So at this point, we need to add that one of the problems that our pension systems face is the issue of low coverage rates. Some countries in the region have a, an informal component in the structure of their markets. And also, because of the health crisis, we've seen a readjustment in labor uh, relationships and an increase in the number of autonomous workers or freelance workers or those who are doing non-standard types of jobs. And this means that the region's pension systems need to incentivize long-term saving by people. And we need to add to this some additional challenges that have been mentioned, such as longevity, sustainability of pension systems, in improving education or financial education and others. And these are very significant challenges. However, Despite uh, this situation, we should acknowledge that there are several countries that had, have continued to make improvements and develop processes that allow for pension systems to work in benefit of their members. An important or interesting aspect to highlight is the fact that we have seen significant progress in the digitization process. This has introduced efficiency into operational systems and also it represents an interesting opportunity to improve uh, our ser the service we provide to our members. At this event, during these three days, we will deal with very important aspects such as gender equality, the impact of longevity, digitization, uh, customer service, as well as uh, the incorporation of environmental, social, and governance aspects into our decision making, as well as other important aspects. Also, at uh, AIOS, we'd like to highlight the importance of the fact that we'll be able to talk about 
progress made in the last 20 years in the Dominican Republic, which is an AIOS member country. And we are honored to have representatives from the Dominican Republic with us. And now, without further preamble, I'd like to thank you once again for joining us. And we hope that this program will continue to enrich your knowledge regarding development, experiences, and new challenges that we will be facing with our pension systems in the future, and in particular in our region. It's our wish to be able to uh, contribute important elements so that pension design, pension system design will be more inclusive and will have adequate sean ustedes muy bienvenidos y muchas gracias por su gentil atención. Adequate income for those who retire. Thank you very much once again and welcome. Thank you very much for your words of welcome, Elio. Thank you again also for your time. I'd like now to give the floor to Diego Ovalero, president of Novaster and Biway, who will also be making some welcoming remarks. Good morning, good afternoon to those of you, those of us in Europe. It's a pleasure to be with all of you one more year, our ninth year of our Global Pensions Program. And due to situations having to do with the pandemic, of course, we have switched to an online format. We have over 500 uh, people registered for the program, Latin America and the Caribbean, the US, Canada, Europe, and it's a pleasure also to be able to greet members from Singapore or Turkey. There was a rumor that we'd have someone from North Korea, but it was not the case. I'd like to share some thoughts very briefly with you and remind you that all of this started nine years ago. And I'd like to talk about some people such as Adam Musterfield from the London School of Economics, Lazaro de Lazaro from Santander Asset Management, who were our first partners in the development and design of this program. Even at that time, we were fortunate enough to have OECD with us. Juan Germo was a presenter during the first edition, and the IDB has also been with us throughout this time, as well as AI OS. We've been very fortunate to be able to count on their support. Thank you to Professor Nicholas Barr. He, year after year, enlightens us with his knowledge, his experience, and uh, his uh, true, uh, deep uh, knowledge about these areas. And also to everyone else who will be joining us for the various presentations, thank you for being with us. I like to also mention the wonderful team that's behind the scenes. Without them, this would not operate this smoothly. The IDB team, the KIC team, and the organizing team, I'd like to thank them. Also, Laura, Paulina, Ekaterina, I'd like to uh, thank them in particular, and Novaster and Biway as well deserve our thanks for their support this year as well as in previous years uh, what we've done is to discuss various topics benigno was telling us a little bit about the main areas that we'll be discussing the main drivers for these sessions. We want to stay abreast of what's happening, but never forgetting the theoretical foundations of what is happening. So we'd like to talk about current events, but also be serene in our analysis, be careful in our analysis, and hold uh, debates that can be enriching and help us deal with such transcendental 
issues as we are dealing with, such as longevity and the pension systems that we will be needing in order to be able to give adequate coverage for this new longevity that we are experiencing. I'm sure we're all eager to get to our presentations for today. So I'd like to thank uh, all of you once again for being with us. And I give the floor back to you, Valdo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Diego, and I'd like to thank all three of you for your kind words of welcome. Our colleagues have mentioned what topics we'll be dealing with and their importance in the development of pension systems in Latin America and the Caribbean.